Bonjour. Fresh off the boat from Bordeaux. Uh, yes, uh, I just was uh, in Bordeaux for the last week tasting 2023s. And you know what? I'm gonna have a little report on that to talk about the vintage, um, which I actually like. I actually like the vintage. It's a, it's a, it's my type of uh, uh, Bordeaux wines, I guess you can say. In all my years that I've been doing Bordeaux, yes, I like the big ones, and I kind of went through different phases. And now, I kind of like elegance in my wine, and I like uh, refined tannins, and I like the, you know, delineation of the, of the, of the, uh, the terroir and the fruit, and everything else that encompasses. Uh, which makes Bordeaux great. So um, it's going to be a really crazy campaign, but again, we'll talk about that later. Today, we're going to talk about something that we don't do quite often when I send um, emails out. Normally, uh, I like kind of finding great value in Bordeaux. Uh, you know, QPR is what you call it, quality price ratio. And, um, but today I think we still have a, a QPR, but in a different way, because uh, 100 points in Bordeaux, uh, even back in the day, 10, 15 years ago, we usually started at $200 plus. Uh, that just was kind of the way it was, you know? Uh, Bob didn't really dish out a lot of 100 points, but I remember in the 2009 vintage when, you know, Pop Clement got 100 and Louisville, Leo Poifre got 100, and Smith Olafie got 100. All those wines went to $250, $300 like almost instantly. Um, nowadays, we have a lot more reviewers out there, uh, but still, um, 100 points is 100 points. And, and, and I think what's happening with this particular wine is that we're seeing more reviewers coming back to it and realizing how great of a wine is, or this wine is, I should say. And we're talking about Chateau Cannon, okay? Chateau Cannon is really an interesting story because in 1996, it was bought out by the fashion brand that every woman covets, uh, Chanel. I know my wife does. And with uh, Alain and Gerard uh, Wertmeier, um, Wertheimer, <laughs> doesn't sound very French, does it? Uh, but anyway, maybe they're from Alsace or something like that. Uh, but they bought the, the Chateau in uh, 1996. They also bought uh, Chateau Rosan in 1994. And man, where they handed a big pile of poo. And I don't mean that like in a bad way for what the potential was. And that's what they saw. I mean, Cannon was a vineyard in complete disarray in 96. The limestone caves that were underneath were crumbling. They had to shore them up. They had to replant everything. Uh, I mean, it was quite a task. And it took the Chateau a while to kind of come into its fruition of where it is today. Because you know, when you replant, it takes 20 years, 25 years before the, the vines really are of that, you know, first growth or uh, Grand Cru Class A quality. And, um, and so that's what happened. You know, they had, uh, they hired uh, a guy named John Colossa back in uh, the mid 90s to run the estates. And he came from Chateau Latour, so the guy knew wine. And what he did is he put into motion a grand plan to completely renovate the chateau. And it took a while. I mean, first it was the vines. So you have 24 hectares of vines that really go into the Grand Vin. Um, so they replanted to 70% Merlot, 30% Cabernet Franc. They went to more a high density planting. Uh, then after the vines started to get a little older, it was time to work on the shea. So they went through a complete renovation of the shea. That's actually started in 2015, no, 2012, and went through 2015. But John was, you know, he, he was, you know, it's, it was time for him to retire. So when he retired, he, uh, the Chateau hired a guy named Nikolai Od Odebert. <laughs> I don't know what it is with me. I'm, I'm still jet lagged. Um, so Nikolai Odebert 
and he came from Cheval d'An. And if you know Cheval d'An, this is the, that's the LVMH property that owned by them and Cheval Blanc uh, in the Andes. And what he did there was remarkable. I love the wines from Cheval d'An, they're great. And so basically they brought him aboard to, to run the estate. And what they did a year later is they brought in a guy named Thomas de Clos. Thomas de Clos, uh, that was in France. Um, and this guy, he, he's an enologist that is really making waves, not only in the right bank, he's starting to work in the left bank too. But his thing is to take the makeup off a wine that was uh, good, but was over extracted or picked too late. You know, they really wanted this, these big and powerful wines and that's kind of what Bob Parker liked, you know? So, you know, all of Bordeaux was like, we gotta make it big, we gotta go 50% alcohol, we gotta blah, blah, blah. And Tomas is like, eh, eh. And my, my good friend, Julia Picot said it perfectly. She's like, you know, our wine was like a beautiful girl that just wore too much makeup. And that's kind of, you know, basically what happened here at Chateau Cannon. They really backed off on, on, on the, and really worked the vineyard to bring out the terroir there because the terroir there is fantastic. You got, it's basically clay over limestone. It's right there at the top of the plateau. So its neighbors are, you know, Cloforte, Beaucher de Faux. So you're talking about some, some high power neighbors. But what Nikolai has done there um, is he's really brought out the layers that that is are in Chateau Cannon, and and like when I tasted the this the last vintage, the twenty three vintage, um, it was uh, it was bonkers, man. It was one of my favorite wines of the vintage. Uh, sorry, anyone else, but I mean you make great wine too, but but this was something that really stood out to me. It was just I I love wines with with complexity, and and. And Chateau Cannon now makes wines of great complexity. And if you notice, like, it's been getting 100 points, almost like, you know, a 20 got a bunch of 100 point scores. Uh, 22 right now already has a, uh, a range of 99, 100 points from Suckling. And the 2019 is kind of interesting because I'll tell you what, it's a great vintage in Bordeaux, first of all. And you know, I love the 19s. I think they're drinking great now. But secondly, uh, you know, back in 19, the vintage when we were tasting en premiere was was in night was 2020 and that's when none of us can travel so these wines had to be sent out all over the world for critics to review and what i'm finding is that critics are coming back to this wine after reviewing it you know when it was sent to america and china and britain and all over different parts of the world but they're coming back to this wine and raising their scores and that's what happened just recently with Lisa Perotti Brown, who used to be the one advocate, as you well know. Uh, she just raised the score to 100 points. Uh, Jane Anson, same thing, who used to work for Decanter. She was the main, you know, Bordeaux uh, writer for Decanter. Now she threw 100 points at it. And so we had an idea, Kyle and I. And I remember I was in his office, and we were kind of going over some notes, and and. Uh, and he goes, I, I have a feeling 19 can is going to get 100 points, you know. So we kind of made an investment, uh, you know, it's kind of like a, a stock pick in a way, you know, when you think something's going to run and you you buy in. And we bought into the 2019 can. And, you know, I would love to open and drink this right now because it is really fantastic. But I did actually have some in the past. And I can tell you right now, this is exactly, me personally, what I look for in Bordeaux, in great Bordeaux. And this wine is truly great. The layers of, of complexity are just, it's off the charts. Put this in a decanter, even now, even to now. Put it in a decanter for, I don't know, three hours. And you'll be astounded on how great this wine is. Now, this sells for under 200 bucks. Anything coming from Napa Valley that has 100 points on it, I mean, it starts at 400, at least, you know? So I think it's also a great value for what it is too, because you're never gonna lose money on this wine. That is if you hold it, you know? Um, and when, when it comes down to like, truly some of the greatest wines of the world, this is now in play. 
uh, and will continue to be in play, especially with the team of Odebert and Duclos. I don't know what else to say other than I love the wine and you should buy it because you'll be very happy when you taste it.